Hello and welcome to this Jam Bike Guy where today we're taking a look at Giant's take on the rowdy hardtail with 29 inch wheels, plenty of travel, and some frame geometry to keep things steezy on the downhills. That's right, in front of us is the Giant Fathom 29.2 and in this video we're going to go into the features and designs of this mid-priced hardtail aggressive mountain bike to find out if this is a good choice in that category as well as figure out exactly what it weighs. So if this kind of thing is interesting to you, stick around and we're going to check this bike out. All right, so beginning, Giant Fathom. Well, the Fathom series itself has been around for a bit of time, but it is one of the aggressive hardtails that are out on the market from a mainline manufacturer. And by that, I mean, in the world of hardtails, the great thing about it is there's so many manufacturers that are out there a bunch of boutique brands making some very, very cool stuff. But in the marketplace for name brands like Giants in front of us here, there's actually not that many bikes that are going to combine super rowdy geometry, 130 millimeters of front suspension travel, and some big 29-inch wheels. If you go back just three or four years ago, that combination basically didn't exist and required you getting a full suspension mountain bike but now we're blessed in 2023 that this was one of the first bikes to come out in that category, but other brands like Trek and Specialized all have rowdy trail bikes in a hardtail format now. But this, the Giant Fathom, being one of the first to get it all together, now has a bunch of formidable competitors, and the one we're going to talk about today mostly is the Trek Roscoe 7. Now that bike is in its third generation and in the three generations it has finally caught up to the geometry of this bike. So the question is in 2023 is this still the best buy? Well let's go over a features on this bike. The first would be talking about the frame. This is their Alux aluminum SL frame. So Alux SL which is a hydroformed butted and shaped tubing to the frame. It features through axle out back you're going to have nice big 29 inch wheels going through this bike. It is a press fit bottom bracket. And as we go forward to the front of the bike, you'll notice a triplicate mount for water bottle mounts on the down tube. And on the bottom of the down tube, you'll have a secondary mount as well as an exit for the internal cable routing. That means this bike has internal cable routing coming in through the top, going through the down tube of the bike and then interestingly comes out at the bottom. And for a lot of people, that's gonna be a nice thing because it is gonna make the internal cable routing on this bike quite a bit easier to do, albeit not quite as sleek as some of the others that are out there. Now up front, the head tube is a inch and a half to inch and an eighth, so tapered head tube going down to Giant's own Crest 34 fork. So this is a 34 millimeter stanchion fork it is going to be both air adjustable as well as have this hydraulic lockout, which you can adjust from open to firm. And it's going to be boost through axle up front, aluminum lowers and stanchions on the bike. And then the cockpit wise, we have a 35 millimeter bar with a nice short and stubby stem that connects up with some decent grips. Although I do actually wish these were lock-ons. This is just a standard rubberized grip. On the left hand side, you've got the one by style lever and that one by style lever operates a giant dropper post. And then of course, to slow the bike down is via some Tektro hydraulic two piston calipers, both on the front and the rear. And that's where we come to our rear derailleur and our one by system. That's right, we've got a single 30 tooth ring up front on this Praxis Cadet crank set. It's an alloy crank set. And then as we go to the back, that's where we've got the Shimano Deor M4100 rear derailleur. This is a clutch-based rear derailleur that operates through a 10-speed cassette. So we go 11 teeth to 46 teeth on the big ring there, driving through that one by up front. And then to get that down to the ground is going to be these giant AM29 rims. These rims are aluminum tubeless ready, wrapped up with an aggressor 29 by 2.5 in the wide trail format in the rear. And very cool, this bike is coming tubeless ready out of the box. 
Now, of course, up front to keep the party going and a little more stick up front, it's going to be the Maxxis Minion DHF. Also an Exo Protection tubeless ready tire wrapped up all together. So that's kind of a pretty good quick hit of parts on this bike for a price point of $1,500. Now at that, you also have in the marketplace the brand new Gen 3 version of the Trek Roscoe 7. Now the Trek Roscoe 7 comes in at $1,649, so $150 more dollars to it. But that bike's going to have more similarities than differences to this bike. But at the case of sticking out a few of the differences, on the front end, part of that $150 is instead going from a giant Crest 34 fork, which is a house brand 34 millimeter stanchion fork. It does go up to the RockShock fork that is potentially a little stiffer and a little bit better damper. And then the other notable change between the two bikes is going to be in the drivetrain. The Roscoe 7 is a 12-speed Shimano Deor M6100, while this is 10-speed. So for those two differences, is the $150 worth it? Well, that's up to you, especially when we consider the weight and the geometry differences. So this giant sitting in front of us here, if it was in a size medium, it would come in with a head tube angle of 66 degrees, where the Roscoe has a 65 a seat tube angle of 75 degrees where the Roscoe is 74.7, a chainstay length of 435 where the Roscoe is 430, and then a reach on this bike of 445 millimeters, which is five millimeters longer than the Roscoe. And what those measurements mean is that the seat tube angle is ever so slightly deeper on the Fathom, which means the bike should climb a little bit better. It also surprisingly has a slightly longer reach. The 445, the extra five millimeters in the front end of the bike should give a little bit more room to the bike. But on the contrary, when we look at that Roscoe, the Roscoe is gonna have a slacker head tube angle. So a little bit more stable in the descent. And to round that out, it does have a shorter chainstay length, which should keep the bike even more playful. So it's pretty neat because the bikes are, well, different, but not all that different in geometry. And then part spec, is pretty dang close with the major difference just coming in at that fork and the derailleur. So let me know in the comments, would you choose this for 1500 or the Roscoe 7 at 1650? Well, anyways, the last thing to talk about here is of course gonna be the weight difference between the two bikes. The Roscoe 7 comes in at 30.62 pounds, whereas the Fathom 29 comes in at 29.96 pounds. Now the Fathom in front of us is a size small and the Roscoe I weighed was a size medium, but basically three quarters of the pound, probably half of that comes in with a frame size. So they're near enough within a quarter of a pound to three eighths of a pound difference between the two, which is not much. Well, thanks for joining me on this video. I'd love to know your thoughts down in the comment section below. So feel free to add those as well as Join me in another video soon by browsing the channel and hitting subscribe.